my signature series. Today, we're diving deep into a fan favorite genre that haunts our dreams and sends chills down our spine. That's right. We're back with our horror episode. Off of our great episode last Halloween, we are back to discuss this year's topic, and that is the top three evil characters in the horror genre. Whether it's a movie, television series, or yes, even a book, we are recounting our top three evil characters of all time. And yes, a few other tidbits to be thrown in. But we're not doing this alone. Joining us in the shadows is our true connoisseur of all things evil, our special horror correspondent, Mr. David Muser. David is an author, a diehard horror fan, and as I like to call him after reading all of his books, an all-around evil genius. Whether <laughs> With his expertise and passion for all things horror, you were sure to take us on a spine-tingling ride through the genre's deepest, darkest corners so with that turn off the lights settle in and prepare yourself for an episode filled with frights insights and plenty of goosebumps no trademark on that rl stein please don't sue me <laughs> let us join and david welcome to back to the show thank you happy happy to be here it's uh it doesn't seem like it's been uh been a year but but time's passing faster nowadays so uh so it, it's it's wonderful to be here and, and just the 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 topic you know, alone, uh, just, just excites me, right? You know, we're, we're right here getting ready for, for Halloween coming up very, very, very shortly. Uh, in fact, I think, like you said, it's going to be, uh, airing, airing, uh, tonight at midnight, I guess, or tomorrow. Yep. Tonight at midnight. So very cool. So yeah, we'll, we'll be able to give you some uh, good recommendations for your Halloween evening. And, uh, some of them you may not want to have the kids watching as they come up for candy, just you know, I'm I'm more on the, the the hardcore side for a lot of them, but we will have some fun stuff too. So. Awesome we to certainly think. will. So so I've got to ask. So I'm gonna sort of throw in a random question to kick it off. So let's. Let, what was your favorite? And I think we asked this last time, but I don't think we went into it. Do you you went trick or treating as a kid? You went going out door knocking. Was there a costume that you enjoyed the most going out trick or treating? For me, if I have to go back to the to the most, it's it's going to sound silly, but it was the old style plastic masks that I'm sure if somebody's cigarette touched it would have burst into flames, right? But it had that little rubber band thing, but I can remember having one that had Frankenstein on it, and I just thought that was just the 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 best thing in the world, right? You know, you wait, got, wait, hold little... on, hold on a second, hold on a second. You were a doctor as a character? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I had my white coat on and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was the monster, if you want to go that way. There you go. There as you a go. horror genre expert, you should be saying this correctly, David. Oh, <laughs> I don't think I had a chance to tell you yet. I got lectured on on Dracula's castle. Okay. So okay. I I have little windows to the world, right? Monitors and stuff all around. So as I'm writing, one of the go-tos is Brom Castle, the Brom Castle, right? And, and everybody calls it Castle Dracula. Well, I'm telling somebody that one day, it wasn't a castle, it's a keep, because the castles were inland, like further in country, whereas at the end, it was the keep. And this was somebody who was from from Romania, so I have to take the word for it. But it was just kind of a funny little dig. I'm sitting there going, and, you know, and I like to watch this, you know, Castle Dracula, and they're like, it's not a castle. I'm like, what? What do you mean it's not a castle? So, it's deep. Wow. That Mind is a deep blown. dive if, if I've ever seen it. So, Dracula's Keep just doesn't sound scary as Dracula's <laughs> Castle. But I, I will be using that every time we talk. someone asks me about Dracula's Castle in Romania. I'm like, that's, that's a keep, sir. That's a keep. I think my dad, one, I think last year my dad was like, I want to go to Romania to see Dracula's Castle. Now, if he brings that up again, I'll be like, well, you can't because that does not exist. Exactly. Now do the research. I never researched it after to find out if they were just pulling my chain because they could be, but but I kind of believe it based on where it sits. It oh. just makes perfect sense. It just cracked me up. I'm like, oh, okay. 
So, so yeah. we are going to talk about the top three in our opinions. And yet again, I should mention that this, these are our opinions, but I think we got a good a list here. Well, I, at least I think I have a great list. <laughs> I'm not sure about David's picks ever, but we're going to go through back and forth and talk about our top choices and why we think they are the most, and I don't want to say evil list, but the most spine chilling evil characters to ever have lived on television movies or yes even that good old-fashioned page author style so i'll throw it over to you first david what's your number three so we're going to go in reverse order as we always do so starting at number three what is your third most evilest character that you think is out there in the medium of horror well i'm curious if you've heard of this person okay so let's go there so have you ever heard or do you remember the tooth fairy from a book called The Red Dragon. Like like the Hannibal Lecter Tooth Fairy you're talking about? Hannibal Lecter Tooth Fairy, exactly. Yes. Exactly, yeah, the the, <laughs> okay. uh, the film that I'm thinking of, and of course the book, I mean, books are always better people, sorry, uh, but but the, fi- <laughs> the, the, the film is called Manhunter, and it came out in 1986. And it's basically a former FBI profiler. It's William Graham. Did a great job in, in, in the role. Uh, he's in it. But William just, Peterson, right? William Peterson is in it as well. Exactly. And and it's one of those things where with him, see, I, I actually. Oh, William Graham plays the Tooth Fairy. That's right. Exactly. So, yes. No. Uh, no, it's, it's Tom. It's Tom Noonan plays that. Tom Noonan plays the Tooth Fairy. In the the uh, Michael Mann film Manhunter, Brian Cox actually plays Hannibal Lecter, and he, in my opinion, was a better Hannibal Lecter. Sorry, 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 Mr. Hopkins, Sir Hopkins, but but I really liked Brian Cox's uh, portrayal in that movie. Uh, trivia that I found on IMDb said that when he did Manhunter. Uh, Anthony Hopkins was doing King Lear, and then when Anthony Hopkins was doing Manhunter, he was actually doing King Lear, and it was just sort of a surreal thing. Uh, but no, I I uh, really enjoyed uh, really enjoyed the 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 movie. the 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 man who played it, that Tom Noonan guy, was just so into that role, and just so you know, you know his his portrayal of that type of person was just yeah. sort of unsettling. Right, you know there's something wrong, but but it's just you know you're not sure exactly what. But they're you know they're a regular member of society. He's going out doing stuff that people are letting him into their house. We won't go into any more because it almost spoil the plot. But definitely watch. If you have not read or seen Red Dragon or Silence of the Lamb or Mindhunter. By 2024, I think it's appropriate. All right, I'm safe to give away spoilers in. <laughs> but one of the funny things, too, is he, uh, I guess he's a method actor, so he didn't want to meet anybody that was going to be his victim before. So he wanted it to be the first time they saw him in character, and everybody else was supposed to address him as that character's name, you know, the the through, throughout it. So that was kind of an interesting interesting play on you know how how he got into that role so i i really enjoyed that i i enjoyed his portrayal of it i enjoyed the book as well uh but it was just something that it all all came together the uh the other interesting thing on that one was their use of color they can't do that in books i'm sorry uh but the use of color in the scenes so when everybody was safe things had sort of a bluish tint to it when things were going bad they were of course different colors and I remember that, and I saw that, like, and you know, I watched it again, you know, about a year ago. And and so, but I didn't put those two together as if, if it was done on purpose. I just felt things were better and calm when they were blue. So it's very interesting uh, way that they did that. Um, I, I I can see that. I, I I don't think I've watched it more than about like a handful of times, Mind Hunter, and and it's probably about 10 years since I last watched it, but I do remember it. And I remember the performances because when uh, Anthony Hopkins came out with Silence of the Lambs, there was a lot of comparison of oh, yeah. uh, who who did it better, Cox or Hopkins. And well, Hopkins won the Oscar. And I, 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 I they both have their merits, right? Because oh, yeah. 
And I think Hopkins does a good job because he he embodied the Hannibal Lecter, but because not a lot of people had seen that movie. But when you do watch it, and Cox has the ability to play evil characters even when they're good characters, right? Like yes. look at Succession. He's able to dive into a character that makes you feel so unnerved even though you know he's a good guy but in Hannibal Lecter in my hunter it, it it's not it's he's no, not no, no no definitely not a good guy um uh, I, I could see him being taught three I, I disagree with you because that's oh, the, that's oh, oh, the name of the game I just like I said the tooth fairy guy was just plus you know naming an evil character the tooth fairy just as funny right i mean it just it it takes everybody's nightmare and and you know everybody's wonderful thing the money under my pillow and all that good stuff and and then we're just we're just ripping that to shreds is what he did well um, when you originally said the tooth fairy I, th I thought to myself are you talking about like Dwayne the rock johnson yes, Dwayne the played? rock johnson was the is, is a horror character <laughs> now now here i i did do some research on these books and movies believe it or not and one of the things that I had forgot, okay, so Michael Mann, as you may know, did Miami Vice, right? Uh, great TV show. I enjoyed it and back in the time. It was people would stay home on Friday nights to go to watch that. It was funny. Uh, but he also did a movie called The Keep. And The Keep is one of my favorite movies where basically it's a wartime uh, thing where the, the Nazis are someplace and, and they, they're, they're trying to get into this thing and they release a monster. So I thought that was really cool. But then after he also did The Last of the Mohicans, if you would have if if there had been a trivia thing that said who was you know responsible who was uh, produced the, the Last of the Mohicans or directed it, I would have never put Michael Mann anywhere near that. So that was kind of interesting. So I did not know that he directed The Last of the Mohicans, and that's, I think I think that's... he either directed it or he was the uh, he was the uh, producer of it. But I'll find that out while you go to to yours, maybe. So my third one, and this is a producer, sorry. yeah. Ahead. So in the in my reverse order, and it's a relatively new character. It's been in, around for some time on the written page, but the reason I put this character, and I'm gonna there's gonna be a long tangent before I actually address who it is. The reason I chose this character, not for the character itself, but the actor who played the character. Okay. And the actor's no, well known as sort of a bubbly type of uh, guy. And then when he plays this character, it takes this whole new uh, sort of persona and he per personifies what evil should be. And that is the, I just want to make sure I got the right date. Hang on before you write it down. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to write it down. Okay. Oh, I think you. I think you've watched this series. I think you've watched this series. And if you haven't, then you should. The original Netflix series, Jessica Jones. And uh -huh. in that, David Tennant yes. plays Kilgrave. And as a as a fan of the Marvel industry, yes. there are times when you get dark and there's times when you get evil. And David Tennant is able to personify someone who is able to control your mind in a way that I have not seen on television or in movies in a very long time for someone who was so personified as doctor who, as that bubbly yeah. character who is running around and using a sonic screwdriver to see him mentally just, and I hate to use the word abuse because I don't want to, but he yeah. was abusing Jessica Jones, the main character My in God. a mind altering, controlling way. And it actually scared me because I was like, this, as much as it's not ever going to happen, this is happening because we find people who are mentally uh, controlling people all the time. And I think, and you'll see the list of characters as I go through them, that most of my characters and the reason why I chose them is because to me, what is scary is things that could actually happen. And when you watch, and I know it's Marvel and it's superheroes and all that, yeah. but you watch him and his ability to portray someone who is so happy, but at the same time, I will kill you if you betray me, is 
superb. And I would highly recommend it. It's the original Jessica Jones. So this is the very first iteration after Daredevil that was on Netflix, now on Disney Plus or wherever, wherever you get your Marvel shows. But I think he did an amazing job. And Kristen Ritter, God bless her, who plays Jessica Jones in that show, she, you watch some interviews like she was actually like to when the cameras weren't rolling it was hard for her to like go back into that oh it's david Tennant, it's not kilgrave so yes i would highly recommend it if you have not seen jessica jones and it's just the first i would say first season and a half bc does make it a few appearances in the second season but go watch the first season it is one of the and I don't say the best, but one of the greatest portrayals of a character who is pure evil personified in a guy who you don't expect to be personified as evil. Exactly. And David Tennant is just a wonderful actor, just in general. I mean, all the, you know, <laughs> Doctor Who, uh, you know. Good it, omens, it, like good uh, omens. Casanova, oh. like he has been able to personify so much. Broad Church, I think it was called or something like yep. that as well. Uh, just great, great. I, 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 I love the actor. I've got a Doctor Who uh, bank over here. Yes, <laughs> my daughter got it for me. Uh, but no, I, 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 I am a Doctor Who fan for for one. But David Tennant in that role playing Kilgrave was just, you know, a lot of times when it comes to comic book fans like myself and movies made from them. You're like, oh, they didn't do that character justice. They didn't do that character justice, etc. This one's one where, in my personal opinion, so all the comic book people come hate me now, I think that this made that character better based on his portrayal. So, because so you could get his his body language is what I'm thinking. And his, and his subtle little whispers and things like that, that you can't see in the panel type displays. Yeah. They don't come through as well. So so not that the character in the comic book wasn't more evil and all that kind of good fun stuff, but but I just David Tennant was yeah, he was he was wonderfully creepy in that, which was great. So so we, we talk about in your original in your third place, you talk about how Brian Cox and Anthony Hopkins played the same character, but they brought two different performances to it, right? But when you think of Hannibal Lecter now, you only think of Anthony Hopkins. As much as Brian Cox sort of was the first one, you only think of Anthony Hopkins. I cannot see how Kilgrave could be somebody else, any actor, because David Tennant was able to make Kilgrave Kilgrave. Like we talk about, and I, hate, we're, I know we're talking about horror for a second, but you talk about the Marvel genre. Like, you can't see anyone else but Chris Evans as Captain America. You can't see anyone else but Tony Stark as Robert Downey Jr. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Kilgrave is David Tennant. David Tennant is Kilgrave. And he was able to bring something to the page that a lot of people were, would not have been able to. Because I look at uh, the Black Mask on uh, Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, the uh, the movie where Ewan McGregor played the main evil character who was trying to hunt Harley Quinn and get him to go on their side. Kilgrave and the Black Mask are relatively the same type of evil character, but Ewan McGregor wasn't able to portray that. David Tennant was able to portray something in Kilgrave that literally went, oh, like I can't see him as Doctor Who right now. But when you watch Ewan McGregor as the Black Mask and Harley Quinn, you're like, all I see is Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only yeah. hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's funny with, with, with that, uh, with his portrayal of Kilgrave, some of the things that he did and he made the other people do, okay, that was also, and some of the things that were just like, they didn't show it, but the little hints of things, right? Yeah. So, so more than just physical abuse, right? You know, mental and all that kind of stuff that probably they would take down the the the, the video for, right? Yeah, you know, we can't we can't go into all those things, people. But just but in the, the comics they do, and that's yeah, yeah. the part. So when you watch, look, read the comics and you go, "Wow, this guy is like, yeah, yeah, punched yeah. up." Yeah, and then no, you watch the, the show, you're like, "Okay, they've PC'd it," but at the same time, they've PC'd it. To a point where it still could be like rated R. Oh, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it definitely, yeah, he he did it. I don't think anybody else would have had that class, right? That's the other thing that he brought to it. You know, it's like, 
I don't know if where, where you stand on which Bonds is your favorite. Okay, uh, but here's Brosnan. Uh, exactly, uh, Anthony Dalton. I think it was right. Timothy uh, Dalton. Timothy Dalton. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was Jimmy Bond. Bond. Jimmy Bond. Right. So so he did not have yeah. the Roger Moore. He didn't have the Sean Connery, any of any of those are my those are my uh, impressions too. He didn't have any of those things. Don't get, he, he, the movie was good, but it wasn't to me a Bond movie, yeah. right? That's the key. And and so with this, like exactly what you said with Kilgrave, I can't picture anybody else being that. I hope if they ever put him into a put the character into one of their movies that they use him because I think he would just do an awesome job. Uh, I will challenge you a little bit because if you remember, did were you did you watch Doctor Who a lot? I, I've seen every single episode, and yes, that's including right the the including the original twenty six seasons that came out in the sixties to the. There 80s. you go. Okay, so do you remember the arachnid thing that was living in the earth? Yeah, and he drowned her and her children. That that's the doc. That's the you know that's you know so he had that evil. Thing, right you know yes he had his fighting hand after he regenerated and all that that was fun but 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 that that was you know that showed what kind of of doctor he was going to be and he pulled that you know were you taking a character that before that and don't get me wrong the, the first guy and i can't think of his name right now but who, christopher eccleson yes he was awesome i loved him i wish he'd have been 10 episodes 10 seasons right i i loved him but then when it got to 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 him he was you know it was, you know, you know, it was more funny, more, more upbeat and all that sort of stuff. But then every now and then would be an episode like that. And you're like going, oh, and, and it, it was just, it was just awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I, I am a, uh, a huge Doctor Who fan. Uh, my we, favorite we'll do, maybe maybe we'll do a, uh, a whole episode just on Doctor Who before the return of season two of the Disney Plus version of Doctor Who. Um, get, but, back into, get back into horror there. Let me do one yeah. quick thing. Just to show my favorite episode, Fish Fingers and Custard. Oh, you're a Matt Smith fan. Oh, no, man. that 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 start of it where he's just throwing the stuff out is just that's the best to me was the best regeneration of a doctor. That's that's all I'm saying. Now as far as you know, as far as that, you know, I I yeah. It, but it's just too funny. I just, okay, I we'll do a full episode of Doctor Who one day. I, and I promise you that one. I'm coming with na- tongues out, tails, uh, t- tangs out. Wow, I can't even speak right now. Uh, like let's it. go to let's go to number two. So your second okay, most so this, evilest oh, character. So the second, the runner up in some sense. Yes. So the reason I went with this character. Okay. So just like you were saying, Kilgrave, he's evil. You know, he's evil. Yeah. You know, it's it's he's you're born evil, all that kind of stuff, right? And and the tooth fairy, evil. He was he was all right. Yeah. Okay. This person is somebody that probably went to yard parties, probably went to church functions, probably everybody loved her. All of her friends would have said, Annie is such a wonderful person. We just love her. And 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 if you can watch that hobbling scene without cringing. You're a tougher person than I am. I mean, that's just you know, and and, and it it's it's one of those things when I think about it. I'm, I'm like, you know, it was a little teeny knickknack that gave him away. I can't remember what it is right off the top of my head, but I think it was a penguin or something like that that had moved. And oh, it was a ceramic penguin. That's what it was. And I'm like, damn, that ceramic penguin. And but no. So so in case anybody hasn't picked it up, it's the book Misery and 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 by 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 Stephen King. You know, he's he's one of my favorite authors, especially in the old days. Uh it's that way with me with a lot of the authors. I like their early works. You know, it's just me. I'm old. Uh, but but Misery is the name of the book. Uh, Annie Wilkes is awesome. Basically, she finds a, a, a writer who had an accident. She saves him. And I'm your biggest fan. And, and so when she saves him, she doesn't want to let him go. Uh, she, is it okay to give the spoiler away? About what he... So he killed one of her favorite characters and she didn't like that so she wanted him to rewrite it and not get away so so yes that is my 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 runner-up kathy bates i mean i hope they never remake misery because kathy bates was perfect in that role 
I, I loved her as, as Annie Wilkes. Right? It was Kathy I, Bates. No, it was Kathy Bates, but I thought they did remake it. Oh, if, if they made, remade it with somebody else, I haven't seen it, thankfully. So maybe, maybe I'm thinking it's The Shining that they remade. Shining, I think they, they remade. Yes, that's right, because Stephen King actually directed the remake of The Shining. You're right. I apologize. And, and, but and Annie Wilkes, Annie Wilkes is actually in, I did the trivia thing, is one of Stephen King's favorite characters because she always surprised him. And I'm like, I like, as an author, I get that. I like that. So that, she is my 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 runner up. So um, before we were going to do our, like our first ones, we would have our honorable mentions. And she was my honorable mention. She was the one that I was like, okay, if we had four or five, she would have been on this list for me because I think you're right. She, first off, I think this, 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 uh, when, when you said the book is always better than the movie, I would be hesitant to agree with that on this book, on this movie, because when you read the book from Stephen King's perspective, you're like, okay. But when Kathy Bates personifies Annie, you're like, no, this is a lot worse than I thought because you're thinking Annie's this nice person person and then all of a sudden you see Kathy Bates you're like oh this is really nice because Kathy Bates was like the personification we talk about like who is really good and then she does a character like Annie and it just scares the shit out of you and as an author and I'm assuming as an author yourself I don't want to be tied to a a post and get sledgehammered to my kneecaps like no like, no, no i'm 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 out on that and and at the end he's walking with like canes or something like that uh yeah that was uh no she uh i i think i would agree there or i do agree there as far as for that's one where the actor playing it surpassed the character in the book yeah. I, I I do believe so. And, and I still can't believe and this is the part that just mind boggles me when I was doing research Rob Reiner directed that. Yes. Rob freaking Reiner. Awesome like it. all in the family directed misery. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That, 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 that I'm like, what the heck? But yeah, no, Rob <laughs> Reiner, Rob Reiner did that one. And, and uh, they did say that uh, James Caan showed up drunk or hung over one day on the set. Evidently he liked to drink is what they said in the trivia. So I, I assume. Okay. And, and, and said that the whole day was ruined and they told him they were going to have to do it over. They said it was a mix-up in the lab with the film or some crap like that. And so that's why they they did that that, that day's worth of scenes again. I'm like, oh, my God, that's horrible. And and the other thing that, that's kind of interesting, just on people, she was a more, you know, I need to study this role. I need to, to, to rehearse, 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 rehearse. He's one, give me the script. Okay, let's go. And, and just did it. And 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 it's just funny that those two in their characters, to me, seem like the same type of people, right? She's the one who's planning, helping, you know, Mister Man, all this stuff, and then and then he's the one who's just like, okay, I'm, I, I I see a chance to escape, I'm gonna go, and doesn't, you know, he's not, you know, he, he's not careful and, and knocks over the penguin or whatever it was. So yeah. So can can I want to I want to dive into this a little bit, and I apologize, we're going a little bit further into this than I probably would want, but I want to ask. To have a good evil character, do you not need a good good character? Like, because you cannot have a bad, like an evil character who carries the whole story narrative without having a good a good pro, uh, uh, protagonist when the antagonist is the entire thing. Because I look at the great horror films, right? Like you talk about Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein's monster, great antagonist. But the protagonist in that, and you can talk either way, uh, would be the humans, right? Oh, this human, like, that's what's scary about the monster. It's not the fact that the monster is born from a guy who's destroyed uh, many people and dug them up. It's that the peep, the humans believe that what they're doing is wrong and you are scaring us because what can you do with what else? Um, for this uh, Cujo, and I'm, I'm picking on Stephen King a lot here, but... Cujo, great antagonist is freaking the dog, right? The dog is that. But I've never seen the, you've never seen Cujo? I will never watch a movie where a dog dies. Oh, that's right. 
Have you read the books? I know. I I know what's going to happen. I know what happened. Okay. So, but 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 don't get me wrong. I understand where you're going with that character, though. So, well, and that's what I mean. So, without Annie, do you not believe that? And I forget his name right now. It's bothering me. uh, James Con's character, without his character being that sort of douchebag asshole. Her character would have just been a douchebag asshole as well, and I, yes. that you need that good good character to have that good bad character. Okay, no, I agree. He he played Paul Shelton. I'm on IMDb. Oh, so Paul Shelton. So Mr. Man, right? Uh, no, but you do need that. In fact, what's funny is I struggle with that in my latest book, right? Because it's a serial killer and I'm writing from his perspective, right? So you don't want to be liking this guy. I'm not writing Dexter, right? I'm not, he's not, he's not killing bad guys. He's killing whatever. Uh, But, but it's one of those things that with that, I needed to find some way that people would care about the book and care about what was going on. So for me, I did it in letter format, single person letter format. So he's writing letters to a detective. So when the the reader is going through that, they're the detective, right? They pick on that. It's he's writing letters to them is what what you would think when you're reading it, right? So and and, you, and it's even bringing part of that person's life into it. You know, uh, he he says in 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 the book, he's like, yeah, I saw your uh, saw your mother the other day. She's doing okay in the home, and it's like to have a serial killer write that in a letter to you where they're describing all the horrible stuff they're doing but they're like hey you know yeah i just did this it's horrible it's it's gross yeah i know you don't like this but your mom's doing fine and and it's like and he's not not threatening nothing just your mom's doing fine and it's like wait a second so so you're exactly right you need that hook there for somebody to like so i think the fact the fact that that annie was so nice, and that's why that's why I picked her as my number two. It's, it's funny you picked her, picked her as your honorable mention, but the reason I picked her, she was so nice that you could picture you know going to her house for for Thanksgiving or something like that. You just don't stay long, but but still you could picture doing that. You could also picture her in that whole Mister Man thing poisoning everybody because somebody made fun of you know or somebody said, oh I don't like this. This doesn't taste well. And then you know what was it the uh, getting hit over the head with the uh, the shovel in the old half of the Hitchcock movie, right? Uh, so, so, but that, it was, yeah, it was just a wonderful mixture of the two. But no, I think you're exactly right because if you have totally people that are not likable at all, then why is somebody reading this book? You know, I don't care about any of these people. Uh, it's, it's one of the problems not to get, like, bash society today, but a lot of times people make stuff controversial when they should just be writing something that's entertaining. I don't care what side of whatever you're on, but make it entertaining. Make me care about these characters. It might be a character that I would not go, you know, hang out with, whatever, all that kind of stuff, but it might be somebody that I at least care, and I'm like, man, I hope they get out of this, right? Let me, you know, as, as a reader, let me think, I want somebody to live. Now, as an author, I don't want any of them to live. But as a reader, I'd like to send maybe one or two of them to make it. <laughs> but no, just, I agree 100%. Just one or two. Um, yeah. So for my second choice, and uh, I'm going to sort of go into the same vein that you have and go into Stephen King's world a little bit. Nice. I think think this I, I've talked about this extensively on uh, with you and I on many of our shows that we've done. And that is uh, not the current iteration, but the original ABC television movie. It. With Mr. Nice. Tim Cur- Mr. Tim Curry as That's Pennywise, nice. I'm That's sorry, but the my top one. I'll explain why I did this because I I was back and forth on this one because I was like, should I put it on top? Should I not? But I think my top one will be. Uh, I'll explain why I chose it as number one. But Tim Curry awesome. personifies horror. Yes, like you think of horror films of the '80s, the '90s, you are thinking Tim Curry. You were thinking Rocky Horror Picture, Picture Show. Oh, yeah, you were thinking yeah. It. You were thinking Clue. You were thinking all no. these great characters, Home Alone 2. You were thinking all these great things that he was able to do. And he personified what Pennywise was, his movements, his gestures. Pennywise, the character, was Tim Curry. And Pennywise 
is such an underrated character. I do not think any of the four movies, and I say four movies because the, two, the original uh, It with Tim Curry was a two-part made-for-television yeah. movie. I don't think they did the book justice. No, and no, that's really. what bothers me, is yeah. the book... And this is the this is the only one that's actually just a book that I would say is go read it, the yes. book. Do not watch the movies because the detail that Stephen King's puts into this uh, story, literally, not only just the remake movie, but had clowns sort of blacklisted as children's entertainers oh, yes. for so long because it changed how we thought of what clowns were because now you thought these are evil people and what's yes. hiding under the makeup. And that to me is the scariest thing that you could have. Oh, I mean, think about it. Okay. It was made for TV movie. Okay. Yep. A couple parts back in the seventies, eighties, I forget exactly when, but some, somewhere back there, you know, time, time flies on TV. Yep. And it still scared the, you know, what out of, everybody there were you know and this was back where you know tv shows just came on people we didn't have just i'm going to stream this so everybody was watching the same shows at the same time yeah and i can remember talking about that afterwards yeah i'm probably watching it too early that type of stuff who knows i can't remember how it was but but i can remember talking about that and just we all float here or something like that and all of those different things and especially when, you know, you figure out what the monster is, right, that even pulls it all together. But I mean, some of that, some of those scenes were just so creepy. Uh, the the remake they did of it, I didn't like that as much. Uh, it yeah. wasn't, you know, I, I enjoyed it because they remade a movie and a book that I enjoy, right? So that's, so, so I watched it and I liked it for that. But as far as for... If you told me, "Hey, Dave, you, you, you know we're gonna we're gonna watch it this weekend," I'd be like, "Okay, let's watch the first." Simple as that. You know, yeah. we've got twelve, 12 hours. <laughs> and and what I think really personifies why I chose this as number two and possibly number one is it took a stereotype of what scares you as a kid shouldn't scare you as an adult, and it turned it on its head that. What scares you as a kid, does that boogeyman under the uh, bed, that shadow in your closet, and it went, no, that was real, and it was not just an imaginary thing. And it was the first time I think a lot of people did that, and maybe maybe not. I haven't read every single book out there, but he was able to put something onto paper that made you think, oh, wait, maybe that bump in the night was actually a bump in the night and that bump in the night today is that same bump and it got you thinking and whenever i'm in my head that's the scariest part in the world is when i'm in my head but when you watch that show or read that book or watch the movies that were cut that came out just recently think of it from that perspective because we all had that moment that we were scared of something so stupid so small so innocent like a clown that could actually be real and it could turn on you and it could kill you by opening its giant mouth. Oh, exactly. And, and what I'll challenge everybody who's watching now, when you start watching some of these horror movies and things, like, especially horror, other stuff, sure, we'll do whatever you want to do. But if you're watching horror or scary shows, turn your cell phone off. Treat it like it's an experience. Don't just be, you know, there's nothing worse than looking down and somebody who's watching a movie with you is looking at their phone and going, oh, oh yeah, 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 it's scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, just get into the experience. Dim the lights, you know, get your popcorn and and and, and just 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 have a good time. But but this, you know, it's so nice that we have instant access to all these shows, right? And and you know, just can watch them anytime we want. Uh, yeah. but but yeah, definitely get into it. But but yeah, I I he he's one of my favorite actors. Uh, you know, Rocky Horror Picture Show is just, it's so much fun. That 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 song, I, I won't start singing it because it'll be stuck in my head, uh, the, the time warp. I, I won't start singing that song, but that that song there, it's, I, I play that for workout music type stuff because it's just, it's, it's, it's fun. And then if you watch the documentaries and stuff on that, how that Rocky Horror Picture Show came about was awesome as well. Uh, but I love I, I I loved him in those different roles. And what's funny is they were all different characters, but he pulled them off. And you weren't watching Home Alone 
thinking about Pennywise. You yeah. weren't watching, you know, you know, uh, Pen, you know, it and Doctor Frankfurter Dr. and thinking Frankfurter. Pennywise. Yeah. yeah, it was just, it was just he, he, yeah, one of the best actors of our day, I would say. So, brilliant. and 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 this is my subtle sort of uh, transition as well. He was also good in the Criminal Minds uh, multi arc episode, and then right after that is when he had his stroke. Oh, poor. And, yeah, so that's when he stopped acting a lot. But Criminal Minds, Tim Curry. If you ever want to watch a good uh, watch. like multi episode series, watch that because it is awesome. So your honorable mention before we move to our top uh, picks here. Honorable mentions are funny, okay? And and I, I went this way because the movie itself focused on some other evil bad person, in my opinion, more so than this person. You might already have an idea who it is, but here you've got Anthony Hopkins running around as Dr. Lecter that's sucking up all of the oxygen in the room, okay? But you've got this guy, Buffalo Bill, who says it rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose. I mean, that to me is the personification of evil and bad. And yes, as honorable mention, but I mean that it you know I wish that they would have spent more time on his character. I would I would like to see them do a prequel to that yeah. where he's first getting into it and talking to Doctor Lecter. That's the series I would have loved on on HBO or whatever. Uh, but that that to me did they uh, not do that for the TV show though? I thought I they went. Was, I thought they I went think, into it for a bit. I don't think Buffalo Bill was in it. He might have been. I don't remember. I, I I'll have to go back and I sign up for streaming services and then watch a bunch of stuff and then cancel it and then watch other streaming stuff. So, but I, I will check that out and let you know. But I, I, cause if he's in it, that's, it's definitely just that character was so, you know, yes, they made fun of it in Joe dirt, which was funny, but, but, but just the fact of, of the way it was in that movie. Uh, yeah, that was just, it was awesome. I mean, it well, just... it, it's the Mandela effect as well, right? Because, and I, and that has nothing to do with horror, but every time you think of Buffalo Bill, I always yeah. think the line is it puts the lotion on the skin or it gets the hose again, but it's not that it's, it rubs the lotion on the skin or it gets the hose. And yeah, it's exactly. very much a very <laughs> subtle change, but it's more scarier the way that it's written compared yes. to the way that people think because it's a it's a directive rather than a request. You're actually going to do it or you will get the hose. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. In fact, that's what, what I copied. I copied that line and put it in my <laughs> notes so I'd read it right because you're exactly right. And and as I said, he just he was a, a creepy guy, but he loved his doll. So I'm I'm right there, you know, and, and all that. So so, but that was a uh, yeah. He he is he is definitely my my honorable mention. Okay, so this is the top choices now, and we're gonna go back to you because I want you to get I want unabashed opinion on my top one. So right. for you, what is your top evil character of all times in any T television series, movie, book, any genre that is included within the horror genre? So, so this one, it, it's from a movie and a book. I saw the movie first, and it was one somebody recommended to me. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen that. I, I don't like the cover of it as far as for the, the movie cover, because I'm like, I, don't, I didn't get it when I first saw it, and the name didn't make sense. But I was like, okay, I'll watch it. Uh, the, the character is either the devil, okay, or a demon in the thing it says the demon so it's it's up to you on what what you think right just some of the words made me think that it's more the the d d demon uh but either way uh it's so it's it's the demon it's it was made fairly recently is what was funny as well it came out in uh 2000 and uh what in 2023 but but it's been it's it's a newer movie you'll you'll recognize the uh the main actor in it who plays the demon, let me give you that first just to see if you've seen it, is Sean Patrick Flannery. Okay? You might recognize him from Boondock Saints, which is okay. like a crime thriller Yeah, no, I've movie. seen Bo Boondocks. Fun, fun movie, okay? So he plays one of the brothers from, from Boondock Saints, okay? Well, in this movie, it's called Nefarious, okay? And on the day he's scheduled for execution... A convicted serial killer and uh, 
a psychopath gets a psychiatric evaluation. I'm just reading this from my notes, uh, in which he claims he is a demon and further claims, this is, this is the part that really gets you, is that the psychiatrist who's evaling him will commit three murders of his own that day. And it is just, he did such an excellent job playing the demon. In fact, one of the quotes from the the movie is is the 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 uh, attorneys like like I didn't even know we were you know we were we were playing a game type type thing and and Sean Patrick Flannery goes that's why you're losing and okay. and just that type of, wow. of cat and mouse uh, it wasn't a two person play right as far as that goes there were other actors and actresses in it but it could have been it was that close because a lot of it you're just sitting there. And and this psychiatrist is interviewing this evil guy one on one, and the evil guy says, "Hey, it wasn't me. It was this demon, and you need to talk to him." And that's and and it's just, it is. He he did such a good job. Okay, I'm going to admit something to you. I was watching. Uh, I did the fanboy thing, and I sent him a message on on social media, and said, "Hey, I'm an author. I loved this. I loved your role." Great. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're embarrassed to know me. Great job. I mean, I just I just went like above and beyond on the it was a post on social media. It wasn't like, you know, to his email or something. Like, I didn't hack into that. But what was awesome is I got a very nice response from him. Thank you. I enjoyed the role, that type of thing. But it was more than just a thank you, you know, go away. It was it was very cool. So so and then other people liked it who were like just family members and stuff. I'm going, okay, cool. But but it just I did the fanboy thing, right? As as far as that goes. But he just, I mean, I can't wait for you to see it. He is he is the perfect demon character, right? It, uh the only reason he may not be the devil is Lucifer Morningstar on, on that TV series. It's just the guy who plays that is just so so good and and he just cracks me up but but that's more where it's he's having fun this is a scary creepy psychological path he's taking this uh, uh, uh psychiatrist down and it's just so good i mean like i said you'll you'll if have, have you seen it yet no i'll have to watch it tomorrow yeah. for well today if you're watching this on halloween <laughs> exactly yeah no definitely definitely watch it like i said it's it's one where i hadn't seen him in a lot of other stuff because i think yeah. he's been like supporting characters in prime like you know Bo boondock Saints one two and three right you know william william defoe was in one and all that kind of stuff so it's you know fun movies i enjoy the hell out of those or heck out of those but but just his portrayal of a a serial killer who says he's possessed by a demon and then the demon talking the way he did and 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 alluding to knowing more and you're not sure if he really does or not and the guy doesn't know if he's just somebody who can read people so he's like oh you're just all just bs type stuff and so yeah no sean patrick flannery did just perfect it was it was he was the best demon portrayal that i've seen even and i even put him above any of those old characters like uh what was it angel movie with the uh, uh angel heart uh, anyway, oh, okay. what was the name? While oh, you're God. looking that up, I will announce my top pick. And my top pick is a relatively newcomer to the horror genre. And I think it was a underappreciated show, television show. The one thing that I could always count on to be scary are lawyers. Of course. <laughs> lawyers are probably, lawyers and lobbyists, as they say in the political realm, are the two L's that you never want to hear yes. or lose. And this character is not just himself as the, the actual character, but the actor who plays him is well known throughout the horror genre, throughout the scary genre, throughout the thriller genre, throughout the, the, the funny genre, as someone who you bring in if you need a supporting character to steal some scenes. <laughs> and this show is one that just ended as of, I think, August of this year. It is about angels. It is about demons. It is about lawyers 
representing demons and <laughs> lawyers. And it is a Paramount Plus television show. And it started on uh, CBS and then it got canceled on CBS and then it moved to Paramount Plus and then it got shorter. And season three and season four is where this character really shines. I would highly recommend anyone who has not already go watch the television show Evil with Kristen, I forget their names, Mike Coulter, but the main evil character in that show is Michael Emerson, and he plays Dr. Leland Townsend. Yes, yes. He is the personification of when life knocks you down, you represent the demon world. Yes. <laughs> and yes. He, he is not just creepy, but he personifies everything that is truly evil within the world. And he uses that to his advantage to sort of uh, surveil the main characters that are in the series. And he works with a cult and demons. And yes, there are demons in the show. And he tries to kill these three people who are investigating paranormal activity done uh, through uh, by, by the Vatican. And he is the main antagonist in the entire show because he is trying to sleep with the main character. And I'm going to spoil it if you haven't watched it, but it's at the end of season three. And if I'm not going to spoil season four, but at the end of the season three, he finds that the main woman has donated her eggs and he takes one of her eggs and impregnates the eggs and puts it in his receptionist body. And it turns out that it is going to be the son of Satan. And it is, I talk about the fact, and as I said, what scares me the most are things that could really happen. And not like the demon stuff, but this could really happen. Someone could technically buy an egg who you're stalking, who you're trying to kill and impregnate it into another uh, person with your semen. And it is just so creepy. And Michael Emerson, he is such an underrated actor that he is the personification of when you look at somebody, you go, I don't feel like something is right with this person. And he is able to portray that so well. And it just scares the living crap out of me. Season four is where he shines. And throughout the entire season, actually starting season three, season four, is the entire time where I'm just going, this does not feel right. And I don't know what it is. And it just keeps on bringing me in. And there was a few moments in, yep. when he was on the screen where I actually jump scared. I was like, whoa, nice. what was that? So nice. That's awesome. I would highly recommend yes. if you have not gone to Paramount Plus, get a subscription. It is, I think it's technically five seasons, but they yeah. merge season four and season five yeah. together. And it's kind of like a longevity of season four, but highly recommend you watch the uh, TV show Evil just for Leland Townsend himself because he is able to make you be scared of music boxes. He's made, yeah. He makes you be afraid Tablet? of tablets. He's, he makes yeah. you be afraid of online little freaking mobile app games. Yeah, that's so, what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's... Yep. <laughs> This is, to me, the personification of what evil characters are like. Someone that could be your next door neighbor, but in going back to Annie, right? The yes. person you could see at the door, uh, the corner store and you go, oh, hi. But behind the closed doors, he is nefariously trying to take you down yes. and he will take you down somehow. So that is mine. Have you seen the show? I'm assuming you've seen oh, the show. Oh, I, I love the show. Uh, my wife and I watch that show. It's a great show. It's 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 one where, you know, the the little apps on the phone, the 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 little things he does and says and and his plans and stuff. It's it's one where I all the other characters on that show. Are you know the main character is really good? Don't get me wrong with anything; they they are excellent. But if it wasn't for him to be that foil against all of them, yes, then it would just be a show. You know, don't get me wrong; I like Buffy, but it would be more of a monster of the week type it, show it, 
where this is this is the evil. Yes, there's little monsters of the weeks coming through, but this is the evil right here. You know, and and and, and I think that's why they did so. So season one, season season one and season two were on CBS. Yeah. Season three through five were on Paramount Plus. I just checked yes. that out right now. And season one and season two was that monster of the week. Here's the yeah. monster. Here's what's going wrong. And that's why not a lot of people watched it. And no. then when it moved to that like overarching storyline of what's going to happen to these characters, yes. that's when Leland really takes hold of the storyline. And you go, Holy shit, this guy's pardon my French, this guy's a lot more eviler than you would think. And just yeah. the personification of what he is is just like 10 stars. Highly recommend it. If he I'm surprised he did not win Emmys for this, but it yeah, because it wasn't that well known. Yeah, yeah. He 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 should have. He, he, he great actor too. Uh what's funny is you mentioned how you weren't, you know, if you met him, like you might not be a little be comfortable, that type of thing. Did you ever see the show he was in called Person of Interest? Yes, yes, that's Great. the show that I. No, he now he plays a good guy in that one. So everybody, he's not he's not evil Satan person. He's he's a good yep. person, and he's he's trying to help people and all that good stuff. But he's just a little bit odd because yes. he's 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 smarter than everybody else around. So they're not on his level. You know, he's telling jokes that we won't get for ten years, right? That type of thing. You know, as far as you know, but but he portrays that friendly odd person that you know that you never think would do anything wrong and the person of interest he wasn't he was helping people but you know you would see him at the store you say hey buddy you know whatever you know if you need help what have you but in that when he puts him in that leland role yeah. i mean it just it cranks up to 11 to to quote spinal tap and it's one of those things where yeah you can't you know you he tops himself right it's like he's doing something and you're like he's evil and then it's like he does something else. He's like he's more evil. You know, it's like what, where where does where does it end, Leland? Yeah, and and I won't say anything because I I don't know how much people have seen. So so that well, exactly. It, it, but it's a like, great show. It's a great show. I would just recommend like at the the last episode, just stop watching fifteen minutes before it ends because the last fifteen minutes you go, oh, what happened there? But uh, watch it. I would highly recommend it. So yes. Before we go, we have one last addition to talk about, and that is it is Halloween day. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, it is Halloween. And of course, there's always that recommendation. And I have a recommendation that I just watched recently, and I thought it was one of probably the best horror films I've seen in some time. Really? And I just I'm gonna say mine first because I want I want yes. to know if you've ever seen this, and it is the movie Dark Harvest. Dark. Let me see. I might have seen. I can't remember. So Dark was- Harvest. So so Dark Harvest is about a ta- like a small town America I've where not. every year on Halloween they have to lock up all the male children who are older than the age of eighteen. And they have to, it's a book who got turned into a uh, movie. They have to lock up all the kids over the age of 18 and they have to starve the male children for, I think it's 72 hours prior to the hunt. And the, on Halloween day, the, uh, the the Halloween night, so the night of Halloween, um, a demonic uh, entity rises from a scarecrow and tries to kill the town and it is one of the most creepiest weirdest movies i have ever seen and i thought it was fantastic and if you want a good movie to watch on halloween night find dark harvest and watch it because you will not be upset that you did because it is slow in some parts but the slowness in parts, you go, okay, I see why they added that part in because now it explains this part and now it explains this part. And each character, there's so much subtext and storyline underneath. Go watch it. Dark Harvest. I forget where I found it on streaming. I think it's on Amazon Prime. And if you don't have Amazon Prime, find it and get it because it is a great movie to watch. What's your recommendation? Nice. I, I will watch it. I haven't I have not seen that one. All right. So so my recommendation, I, I had to do better than you. <laughs> so you gave you gave people two hours of 
horror and fun. Uh, I'm going to give you like five episodes or six episodes. I don't remember which. Uh, have you are, ever seen Archive 81? Okay, so Archive 81 is where a, a young man is hired to restore a collection of damaged videotape. And he, as he works through them, right, he, he's seeing some sort of mystery thing where there's like a dangerous cult, eerie events. You're not sure if it's, you know, you're seeing people that maybe are out of time, that type of thing. I won't say anything to give it away, but you don't know what's going on. You don't know if it's in his head. You don't know where it's at. But but the young man who's who's in it is is did a great, great job. Uh, I'm sure Mamandu. Oh, Athi, A T H I E, great, great character. I mean, it's 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 a it's a it's a wonderful, uh, fun series. The problem is they only did one season. They do finish it, so the show finishes. But it's one of those things where I'm like going, they should have kept this going. Uh, unfortunately, it was 2022, so I doubt if they'll they'll do some others. Like them was a series I'm wishing they would would do more of. But yeah, so definitely they, they, watch it. They released it in 2022, so that means they probably filmed it right before the pandemic, and it probably got edited during the pandemic, and they probably all went to do other things, so they just canceled exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, it's such a good. The the good thing is there is an ending, right? There's a beginning, middle, and end. Because I wouldn't do that to people if there wasn't. Uh, I'm not that evil. Uh, but yeah, that's it's a good show. And if you want something just fun, okay, I'm gonna go for two. Uh, Transylvania six five thousand. It's just fun and campy, and no, there's nothing serious about it. I know everybody's a hocus pocus fan. Don't get me wrong, I like that too. But but just if you want something campy and fun, just watching the guy answer that telephone, the guy who played in Seinfeld, is just so funny, right? So so yeah, so that's just okay. a that's something fun. So I will have to watch both of those. I know I have Netflix, so I will tune up uh, Archive eighty one uh, tomorrow yes. night. Well, or tonight if you're listening to this right now, because we're totally recording this live at midnight yeah. on Halloween. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, <laughs> So to recap, your top three evil characters are what, David? My top three evil characters. First is going to be, or number three is going to be the Tooth Fairy. The next is going to be Annie Wilkes. Tell me what movies they are in or book uh, series. Tooth, so that Fairy, way. From, Tooth Fairy from Manhunter. The next is going to be Annie Wilkes from Misery. And then finally, uh, Sean Patrick Flannery uh, in Nefarious. So, so definitely watch that. He, he, like I said, you will love him as, as a bad demon sort of character. <laughs> and my, and my top three, going from third to first, is David Tennant as Kilgrave in Jessica Jones, Tim Curry as the original Pennywise in the ABC television movie It and It Two, I think it was called, or I think it might just be It Part Two. And then my the evilest character that I could think of as of 2024, October 31st, is Dr. Leland Townsend, played by the immacul immaculate Michael Emerson in the television show, Paramount Plus TV show, Evil. And go watch some movies tonight, guys, because it's going to be fun. It's an exciting time out there for to be a horror film uh, junkie or an evil fan, because... Seems like they're pumping out a lot of great horror shows right now and horror movies right now. Do you oh, exactly. Yeah, the remake of, of Evil Dead was awesome. I, I enjoyed the heck out of that. It was really scary. I even jumped a couple of times, so that was awesome. Uh, so so before I show my book, I do have... I was going to say, we have to I do, do this shameless plug here because... I got to do, do a shameless plug, uh, but it, it's one of those things that, you know, as, as we look at this, you know, all of these different movies and stuff, I do want to reiterate again, people just turn your phones off for an hour or two. It's, it, it's fun. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely watch some horror and also comment. Let us know what horror movies you like and I will watch them. One, I'm going to tell people to watch the original, though, because I did watch this for you. OK, I watched it for you. I watched the remake of Salem's Lot. OK, the two hour movie of Salem's Lot. They basically fast forwarded the 75 hour TV series into a hour and a half chunk. And it's like, and now they're here. And I'm going, wait a second. And and characters are introduced that weren't there in the original. And and it's just, I, I'm like, dude, I, I yes. Yeah. So watch the original. It's slow. Yes. Cause it was bailing in the eighties, 
The book's better, Salem's Lot. But yeah, I watched that movie for you and this audience. So please appreciate that. <laughs> there you go. David, it is always a horrific pleasure, but we've got to do the shameless plug. Got to do the because, shameless plug. Here we so go. You have a new book. What I is do. it about and where it's, can people find it? it? They can find it wherever books are sold. That's what's awesome now. I am published by Next Chapter Publishing, and, and it's the best thing I ever went. You can even get my books at walmart.com. So so wherever ebooks are sold, you can get them print. It's coming from Amazon. Uh, it's called The Bloody List, and it's Letters from a Serial Killer. And basically, uh, he writes letters to a detective. And one of the first things he asks her is, did you ever have an, ima an imaginary friend? And he says, I did. And basically goes on to say his says that he was an ancient god. And he's going to help me make people pay for not doing the right thing. And basically, and the, the, the list itself that he's talking about here is a list of everybody who's wronged him ever. So we're talking people who may have cut him off in traffic that he knew. We're talking people that maybe gave him the wrong order at the drive through And, and, and the main thing I did about this, okay, it all starts because his family gets killed. His family gets killed. He finds this old list. And before that, you would love Charlie. He was a great guy. Everybody loved this man. He did his job. He went to work. He loved his kids. Everything was perfect, right? They get killed. The people who were responsible for it, yeah. they don't get, there's no justice. So he starts down a path of seeking justice and maybe he goes a little bit off the deep end. It's just you know, your, your personal thing on that. Uh, but it's it's one of those things where I wanted to give a roller coaster ride. I want you to love Charlie at the beginning because he's a good guy. And it just so happens that later on he does some things you might not agree with so definitely check out the bloody list letters from a serial killer uh one hint i'll give everybody in this book is i do have newspaper headings in this it was something that i saw on a real non-fiction book that i looked at and there are newspaper headings right and it's milner daily well it's small but if you look in the back of the book it actually tells you all of them right and it's even captioned uh, excuse me, not caption. There's even alternate text for anybody using an e-reader who happens to be blind or something like that. So it'll read out to you. But it was one of those things where I wanted to make sure that everybody didn't have to go get their magnifying glasses to read that. But it was just, it, it was something that doing that letter format thing, that news, the letter format was fun. I enjoyed that. And I think I'm going to do that again. But having those newspaper clippings tie things together. Hey, this serial killer is doing this. There's a yard party this week at the church, right? It's sort of a, yeah, it's a nice little break to, to let oh. you know what else is going on in the town. So, so wow. definitely check it out. Called The Bloody List. I will link it in the show notes uh, for our Canadian audience. You probably will only be able to find it via Amazon. I'm not 100% sure about that yet. Yeah, it's Kobo and a whole bunch of other things. But I'll, I'll, give okay. you the, I'll give you the universal book link and people can get it. It's even in, you know, an ebook store in Australia, I so. Oh, perfect. Even better. Um, David, thank you so much for sitting down with me again. It's always fun to chat horror with you. As much as we disagree, we agree. And then we end up always surprising each other with at least one little tidbit because I'm going to go look up Archive 81. You're going to yes. go watch Dark Harvest and we're going to come back next year or we could probably text each other and be like, uh, what the heck are you talking about? Why was it so good? Because I hated it. Or why did you think this was scary? Because I didn't think it was scary. <laughs> Exactly. There's always that. And but we we have to come back for our Doctor Who episode. I yes, think. we will be doing that before <laughs> Christmas because that's when the new season will be probably launching because Doctor Who will be there for December. So we'll probably be back in December. So yeah. everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe tonight, everyone. If you're out there trick-or-treating, be sure to look both ways before you cross. Mothers and fathers, go enjoy stealing some candy from the kids and go recreate the Jim, uh, classic Jimmy Fallon uh, or Jimmy Kimmel uh, online meme. I ate all your candies and see how they take that on November 1st. David, always a pleasure. Happy thank Halloween you. to you, man. Happy Halloween. Mm hmm.